It's street research. Oh yes, we would be uh, we would go to uh, garage sales or uh, or um, um, little nickel and dime shows, and he'd see a box in the corner full of old magazines. <laughs> he'd buy it. He'd go home, get out his scissors, and clip and clip and clip all day long <laughs> until he found all those pieces that he was looking for. You couldn't find a magazine in his house that didn't have pictures cut out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's how he did it. Yeah, he just do them straight from the phone. He do it from the so he, his, his format was uh, he would take a, a, a cardboard and he would just arrange them on the cardboard either with a piece of tape or something until he got something the close to his perspective. Like. The composition he was looking for. Then he would etch it on a, on a canvas. Did he have a gallery? Yeah, yeah, he had like you have in his home. His gallery was his home. He has some display work in Mexico in a museum, but not in a large way. Did he have a dealer? Uh, he never had a dealer. He was his own man. He made his own deals. Because of all of his, all of his commercial art that he did, it was already sold before he ever did. That's what he, that's what he paid his bills with. Yeah. This was his love. This was what he did himself. Uh -huh. So after he went to work for somebody else to do whatever, whatever commercial artwork that, that uh, he would either do through his own company for them, or as an employee of someone else's company, mm -hmm. which he did for a number of years, when he was done with his nine to five job, he'd come home and do this for another eight hours. Yeah, what was the matter? He was a commercial artist. Oh, he did for Azteca Films. He did oh, uh, he, okay. in Los Angeles. He yeah. also did for uh, for other production companies. He did commercial artwork. If someone wanted to design logo for uh, their little company, he would design for them and things like that. Uh, but always original art is what he did. Yeah, I can understand always original that. art. That was even even in the, his production work, they would just give him the concept of what they wanted, and he would design it. He did a lot of hair products. He did do a lot of hair products. We were he did. Though. Yeah, he did do a lot of hair products. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. He used to go to fold. I had to fold up the folders, the, the big posters, uh -huh. and then they would mail them off to the theaters. <laughs> um, now he was a Renaissance man. Even beyond the painting, which was obviously his love, he was also an artisan, uh, a, uh, a carver. He carved major pieces of furniture. Oh. Big chairs and. Tables and uh, out of uh, uh, different types of wood. Do sculpture. Yeah. Yeah, he did do sculpture. Not yeah, a lot. A couple of busts. He did a couple of busts. Uh, model airplane maker, model ship, model car builder, but not from a kit. Yeah. He built his own kit. Okay. He cut his own pieces out yeah. and then assembled those pieces. He built he built stuff from hand. He built his own furniture for. His, he custom designed, drew all the blueprints for the architecture. For the brickwork, the masonry, the electrical, the uh, woodwork, the the uh, plumbing. Uh, plumbing, all for his house that he had built for him down in Mexico. Oh boy! Never hired an architect. Uh, he designed. Never took a, a day's worth of architectural courses. Not one. Yeah. But all of them were all up to code. Everything was passed by the uh, by the by the city for him, and they built it exactly from his specs. And and just to make sure, do you remember the model? He made the model house. Yeah. He built he built the house to scale. Uh, and that's what that's what his concept was that he could show people what he wanted. That's great. Yeah, he was, he was good wonderful. like that. I wonder what happened to that model house. Oh, is he still there? No. no. He's been gone about ten years, ten years now. The detail is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I better move up before my wheelchair rolls.